Good afternoon, Board of Living Essentials. Thank you for welcoming us back here this afternoon. My name is Joe Dezita. I'm Jonathan Rojas. My name is Juan Martin Dick. And my name is Amy Sims. And we are from Simarota Consulting. Last time we spoke, you had to take a look at your company, Living Essentials, and its product, 5-Hour Energy, and take a look at the various concerns and difficulties you were experiencing. Here's what we found. This is your product, 5-Hour Energy, a small, liquid, easy-to-consume energy supplement. In fact, seeing as it is your only product, this is your company. The fate of Living Essentials depends on the success of this product. But enough about what I have to say about your product. Let's hear what you have to say. What do you think about caffeine? We consume over two billion cups of coffee every week without a second thought. Five hour energy has less caffeine than some Starbucks coffees. Plus, it has vitamins and nutrients. It's simple, caffeine with vitamins and nutrients. It's the combination that makes it so great. Before you make a decision, Get the facts, try a sip and find out why so many people love five hour energy. Now that we've heard about your product from you, let's hear what other people have to say. This is a news broadcast from ABC News in 2012. We know that people will go very far in the search for more energy and a lot of that time it means pouring in the caffeine, but can too much caffeine too fast be deadly? Tonight, the FDA is looking into reports of more than a dozen people whose deaths might be linked to the five-hour energy drink. As you can see, ABC was naming out uh, energy shots as a cause for not only deaths, but also various health concerns. Specifically, they mentioned your product, Five Hour Energy. Now, before we start arguing, refuting, pointing fingers, we must all acknowledge that this is an issue. On the one hand, you have your company, Living Essentials, stating that vitamins, caffeine, forming a safe, effective energy supplement. On the other hand, we have studies showing that your product is dangerous. Let me repeat, studies have shown that your product is dangerous. This is why we are here, and this is why something must be done. Let's take a look at the greater issue. The energy supplement market is under attack. Yes, you heard me, the market is under attack. When we last spoke, you had us take a look at your particular company and the various difficulties and concerns you, you had experienced with your product. Though we have come up with various tailored solutions that we feel address this problem, we also want you to know that the issue is far bigger and that we have also come up with ways to address it and overcome these particular issues. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be discussing these five topics, which are the health issues, the legal aspects of advertising, product analysis, solutions, and benefits. All these topics will be addressed under three different dimensions, which are the financial, the legal, and the ethical. Now we'd like you, John, to take role and proceed the presentation. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of the perceived difficulties and issues that we have encountered with your product, 5 Hour Energy. First, as we saw in the video, our major ethical dilemma with your product is the health issues that it poses to its consumers. Second, we also, leading, that le leading to the health issues are the ingredients that your product contains. Third, we have the labeling of your product. Currently, your product does not label the amount of caffeine and does not label all of the ingredients that your product contains, which causes an issue. Then we have communication, which ultimately ties in the labeling. The communication that you give with your consumers is currently inefficient. So now, here are the solutions that we will propose and further elaborate within our presentation. The first solution is to change the ingredients in your product in order to favor a more healthy product, safer for your consumers to um, consume. Then we have the marketing tactics of your product. Currently, your product is not marketed under the FDA as a beverage, which basically means that you do not have to list the full ingredients and the amount of the ingredients that your product contains. So currently, one of our solutions is to basically market under, under the FDA as a beverage will require you to list the amount of caffeine to, that your product contains. Ultimately, we will show that our solutions will basically make for a safer product and will lead you to, ultimate benefit, to reap the ultimate benefits of global expansion. So now, Amy will talk about the health issues. Okay, so this graph right here is the amount of emergency room visits related to energy drinks since 2005. 
So as you can see, uh, energy drink emergency room visits have gone from 1,494 in 2005 all the way up to 20,783 in 2011. Now, this obviously poses the problem that energy drinks can cause a health risk. Uh, while you may be saying, yeah, this increase is related to the increase of the ener energy drink market as a whole, that is even more incentive for you to make sure that your product is safe for the consumers. With more people consuming it, your health issues are only going to increase with more health issues among the people consuming it. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about your product in particular. Since 2009, Bivar Energy has been cited in 13 deaths. That is, 13 people since 2009 have taken 5R at 5R Energy and in a time period after have passed away. Um, so, it has also been cited in 30 other life-threatening incidents including heart attacks, convulsions, and spontaneous abortion. These types of health issues can have legal consequences for you as well. As you know, in 2009, your company was sued by Monica Hassel, the spouse of deceased Antonio Hassel. Now, Antonio Hassel was one of the consumers that you have said that you specifically target. Antonio Hassel took 5-Hour Energy daily to stay up through his late night work shifts at a warehouse. Your company says that you specifically target those with long work shifts or late night work shifts. Now, Antonio Hassel died of a heart attack after taking 5-Hour Energy. And doctors cited energy drinks as the main cause of his death. The argument against 5-Hour Energy also cited studies that say that even one 5-hour energy can increase heart rate and blood pressure in healthy patients. So this obviously poses a problem to your consumers who have pre-existing heart conditions as the extra heart rate and blood pressure poses an immediate health problem to them. The argument also cited your past hangover cure tablets. So as you know, in the past, Living Essentials sold hangover cure tablets. These had to be taken off the market because of studies that showed their lack of effectiveness. You do not want this same sort of thing to be related to your 5-hour energy product with its increase of health issues. In addition, Antonio Hassel is the, the prime example of your consumer that you target to. If the consumer that you target to is taking 5-hour energy in a way that you say is safe can still have health problems, this poses an ethical issue to you as you have a duty to maintain the safety of your consumers. And now Joe will talk about more about the ingredients of your product. Now, your product 5-Hour Energy consists primarily of three ingredients, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, and caffeine. It is these three ingredients that have caused the most controversy. Though I will elaborate further, I will begin by describing how these particular ingredients work. Vitamin C, which is an effective vitamin at producing energy, works by metabolizing fats, carbs, and proteins and converting them into energy. Despite this benefit, the amount of B6 load present in your product is such that it leaves consumers open to various adverse health effects. Studies have shown that in quantities above 100 milligrams, vitamin B6 can be detrimental to your health. Your product contains 40 milligrams. You may say, oh, this is fine, we're perfect. Except for the fact that this, in addition to the size of the liquid, the name of the product itself, and an advertisement claiming you can consume two five-hour energies, these facts together will leave consumers open to the risk of experiencing these adverse health effects. Consider, for example, an Antonio Hassel, a man working an eight to nine hour shift as an employee. Coincidentally, he's your largest target market. He may read the label five hour energy and think that not only are two bottles acceptable, they may be required for him to get through his day. This in conjunction with the fact that it's a small amount of liquid that could be consumed rapidly only exacerbates the problem. Next, we have vitamin B12. Much like B6, it works in metabolizing in order to create energy for the body. However, it has been shown that it's much more effective than B6, and unlike B6, studies have not shown that there is a limit to the amount of B12 that you can consume. Finally, we have caffeine. Now, caffeine works differently than the vitamins in that it, more, it works more to promote alertness rather than energy. Unfortunately, your product does not even adequately label the amount of caffeine present, which is an issue we will address later. However, studies have been conducted that show there are 215 milligrams of caffeine in your product. The same studies have shown that after 400 milligrams of, cough, of caffeine, rather, uh, consumers are exposed to these various health risks that I mentioned before. For the previously mentioned reasons, this means that consumers are open to the possibility of experiencing adverse health effects. In addition to this, it has also been shown that consumers 
taking just a single five hour energy have experienced high blood pressure and high heart rate in 50% of cases. This by itself is an issue, but in conjunction with either improper labeling or lack thereof, certain groups of consumers, such as uh, children and seniors, may be more at risk. I will now direct Jonathan to elaborate on the labeling issues. So labeling. As Joe discussed, we have certain issues with the <coughs> labeling. Currently, you are not required by the FDA to list the full ingredients in the amount and the amounts of the ingredients on your product. Currently, your product does not contain the amount of caffeine that it has. It just says it contains the it, it contains an amount of caffeine equivalent to that of a premium cup of coffee. Most consumers don't know what that means. So that poses a threat to most consumers because in consuming other caffeinated beverages, caffeinated products, they're unaware of what exactly your product contains, the limit that it ultimately contains. So therefore, if they drink a cup of coffee, have caffeinated gum, take some, drink a Coke, and then take your product five hour energy, that could put them over the 400 milligram limit per day, which they are unaware because your product does not list the amount of, of caffeine that it contains. So then, this leads us to our next issue. Your current label on the product says that it is okay for people over the age of 12 to consume. In a study by, done by the American Academy of Pediatrics, it says that your product is not safe to consume for anyone under the age of 18. To elaborate further on this, one of your competitors, known as Monster Energy Drink, is currently being sued by the city of San Francisco's attorney for this same reason, marketing to people under the age of 18 with a beverage that contains high level of caffeine, which has been proven by the American Academy of Pediatrics to be unsafe for these children and for these teenagers. So ultimately, we believe that your consumers have the right to know what's in their product and what they are consuming. So now this leads us to the communication issues that you have with your product, and Amy will now discuss them. All right, so consumers, when they hear about 5-Hour Energy, they hear it in the news related to deaths, health issues, deceptive advertising, etc. They're not having a very good picture of 5-Hour Energy. Also, they're hearing that, the, uh, that there's a group of doctors and health officials looking to the FDA to limit the amount of caffeine and energy drinks, as well as the demographics, as Jonathan mentioned earlier. There are, is a group of, of doctors trying to get the FDA to limit energy drinks to, to be sold only to those over 18. So this type of negative press can have major financial implications to your company. Monster Energy, in the past year, their stock has decreased 40% as a result of bad press. So with that being said, it is important to be truthful with your advertisements to consumers. So now let's take a look at some of the things that your product itself says. So you look at the front of the 5-Hour Energy and it says, hours of energy now, no crash later. You turn the bottle around, in five print, it, fine print, it says, no crash means no sugar crash. Five hour energy contains no sugar. So if five hour energy contains no sugar, what consumer is gonna think that they're gonna have a, a sugar crash? Your average consumer is looking at the front thinking, if they're taking this product, there's not gonna be any crash at all. This claim is not true because studies have shown that five hour energy does cause a crash. So while you're saying, yeah, we put in five print on the back, it doesn't contain sugar crash, sugar crash, and that's what we need, your consumers feel like they're being misled because they're thinking, oh, there's not gonna be any crash from this product. In addition, one of your commercials, as shown on the board, says, we asked 3,000 doctors to review 5-Hour Energy, and what they said is amazing. Over 73% who reviewed 5-Hour Energy said that they would recommend a low-calorie energy supplement to their healthy patients who use energy supplements. Now, in order for you to make this claim, Look at this fine print that is necessary. So as an average consumer, I'm thinking, why, why for this one sentence claim do I need two paragraphs of fine print? Um, obviously, as a consumer, I'm thinking that the company is trying to mislead me. When I'm already seeing all this negative press in the, about five hour energy, I don't want to also feel that I'm being misled by the company. Forbes even published an article poking fun at this claim, saying that a reasonable consumer would be stupid, essentially, to believe this claim that you are saying. This damages your relationship with your consumers. So already, as we said, your consumers are not going to trust your product because of the negative press. And with the negative press, ads like this that are saying 5-Hour Energy is completely fine just simply aren't believable to consumers. And so now we're going to go into our solutions, starting with your proposed mission statement by one. Thank you very much, David. 
So before we actually step into the proper solutions that we have designed and engineered for you, let's review who you are. So who you as a company stand for. For this, we actually have engineered a mission statement from previous talks that we have engaged with you, in which you have disclosed your values and principles. So if you would like to see at the outline that we have passed down, we actually have written this mission statement for you to read, or if you would like, you can actually read from the board. I will proceed to read. The mission statement says, Living Essentials is committed to supplying our customers with the finest, high quality products and leading the industry in nutrition research and education. Living Essential supports these goals with a corporate philosophy of adhering to the highest ethical conduct in all its business dealings, treatment of its employees and social and environmental policies. Again, what I want to reiterate is that this is who you as a company, Five Hour uh, Living Essentials, stand for. So as we actually are going to proceed into the solutions, we have particular design and engineer each and every one of them to fit these uh, values that you stand for. Now we'll let John to continue. So the first solution that we are proposing is to improve communication with your consumers. So as Amy discussed, there's a sense of distrust between you and your consumers because of the ads and the misleading advertisements and the things that sit on your labels that consumers are led to believe, but as we have shown, they it's the exact opposite. So ultimately, we want you to label your product in a way where you give them everything that's in your product. So currently your label, as I indicated earlier, does not contain the amount of caffeine that your product contains. So ultimately, we would like you to list that so consumers can make the decision on themselves whether they are able to consume other caffeinated beverages in addition with yours or to the amount of your product that they consume, could consume per day in addition to if they have health risks they are able to decide for themselves basically whether they can consume your product or not. Another way to improve communications is to make your ads more truthful. Currently, as we showed you, the ad that you that, that Amy showed us on the board, you, can, you can't even read the fine print, honestly. In, in a 30 second commercial that you're watching on TV, it, you're really not gonna catch anything it says. These ads are seen as misleading and provides a lot of distrust in your consumers. So we are asking you to create ads that are more truthful in a sense to not mislead or deceive your consumers in a way where they could gain trust. You could gain their trust. So this leads us to our next, um, this leads us to our next issue, which with the increasing competition, you must gain this trust and transparency of the, um, with your consumers that Joe would discuss. So up until this point, you might be saying to yourself, sure, this seems bad, or maybe I should change, but no, we've been doing this well up until this point in the market. Can there really be an issue? If nothing else, this only further reinforces our claim that there is an ethical dilemma here. Not only has your product been shown to be harmful, people are consuming it anyway. Maybe they don't know. That is an issue. You as a board of Living Essentials are at a crossroads. Behind me, you'll see a few of the literally dozens of energy shots that upon entering the market, simply imitated the formula and strategies you did. In other words, you are no longer unique. But as I will explain later, we have formulated a unique approach to address this problem and eventually counteract these effects and not only uh, resolve the ethical dilemma, but also gain more market share. What do we propose? How do you stand out from these brands? We recommend you change your formula. Yes, we know it does not seem like the easiest solution, but as I will explain, it is the correct one. Specifically, we are recommending two things. One, reduce the amount of vitamin B6 and caffeine, and two, add vitamin C, D, and E. As I mentioned before, vitamin B6 acts as a vitamin that increases energy levels. However, however unlike B12, which also works in conjunction with the product, it is not nearly as effective and it is known to cause health risks. Therefore, by reducing the amount of B6, you are really not losing much from your product. In fact, by lowering the amount of a potential harmful ingredient, you're only strengthening the image of your brand, one that is more concerned with consumers. Next, we are recommending you reduce levels of caffeine. Now, as we mentioned before, caffeine is present at 250 milligrams in your, in your product. We are recommending you reduce it to below 200. By doing this, you are not only making a healthier product, you are also making a product that can be consumed in excess of one bottle. Additionally, as I mentioned previously, caffeine functions in alertness. It is, it, there will be no negative effect from reducing the amount of caffeine on energy. And as I will explain later, we have a, a way to counteract the loss of alertness through caffeine. 
Our second recommendation is the additions of vitamins C, D, and E. Now these three vitamins have all been shown to be effective creators of energy in the body. And not only that, they are shown to be much safer and they can be consumed in much larger quantities than vitamins B6 and caffeine. First you have vitamin C. Vitamin C works by using and absorbing iron in order to create energy. And in addition, it fights fatigue. Therefore, by exchanging some amounts of caffeine with vitamin, with vitamin C, you are making up for the lost benefits. Next, vitamin D. Vitamin D works to synthesize calcium to add additional energy products, energy after effects. Finally, vitamin E. Vitamin E is a powerful antioxidant that works to add oxygen to the cells in order to increase energy. Additionally, in a society that is so concerned with health, you are now creating a product that has more healthier vitamins, which your consumers will notice. Not only this, you will now be able to promote your product as a healthier alternative to all the products I just showed you on the previous screen. Essentially, what we are recommending is a change to your product that will not only improve the image and health of your product at virtually no cost to effectiveness, it will also allow you to stand out from the other brands. This is why you need to do this, and this is why it's a great decision. Okay, in addition to changing the ingredients, we are also recommending that you begin marketing 5-Hour Energy as a beverage under the FDA. So, you're not going to be the first in the industry, the energy drink industry, to do this. Currently, Monster, Red Bull, and Rockstar all market their products as beverages under the FDA. So, marketing under, as a beverage under the FDA will allow you to provide your consumers with more complete and truthful information regarding what is inside your product. This will also help you to combat the belief that many of your consumers have that you're marketing yourselves as a dietary supplement in order to avoid the strict regulation of beverages. That belief is currently harming your reputation with your consumers, and when marketing as a beverage, that belief will no longer have any uh, standing. Uh, finally, marketing as a beverage will create easier to read labels for your consumers. When a consumer looks at an energy supplement label, it kind of does, it's harder to under, for them to understand because it's not what they're used to seeing on foods and regular beverages. So they're not understanding that the ingredients in your product can be harmful to them. When they're reading a nutrition facts label, which would be, which what they would if you were marketing, at a, marketing it as a beverage, they're gonna understand more what is in your product and whether it's safe for them to consume. So when your consumers know that what is safe for them to consume, they're not gonna take it if it's gonna cause them health issues, which will, in turn, reduce the amount of health issues that you have linked to your product. Finally, we're gonna say that you should put caffeine on your labels. While you may be thinking that that may be a disincentive for your consumers to purchase your product, it will actually increase your cons consumers' trust because they will know exactly how much caffeine is in your product. And again, as I said earlier, they will know whether or not it is safe for them to consume. So now Juan will talk about the global implications of our solutions. Thank you very much, Amy. So, the correct implementation of all the solutions that we have proposed will actually have a synergetic effect which, which will help us to expand and settle in definite foreign markets. Currently, you are settled in Canada, the UK, Ireland, and Spain. And something that will actually help you to do all this is by appropriate determination with the current regulations that are in the foreign markets. Particularly, you are searching to expand into the markets of Mexico, Portugal, Panama, and South Korea. But currently, the, the, your performance in the markets that you're currently settled has slowed down. We have found out, due to research, that uh, you're encountering difficulties with the legislation, particularly in uh, the European markets and in Canada. In the European markets, the European Union has certain le legislation that encourages products to create a label that specifically addresses the products as highly caffeinated. As we can see from the product that, uh, that you're currently trading, there's no such warning. At the same time, in Canada, there's certain regulation that specifically <coughs> addresses to include product warnings for this product not to be consumed with alcohol. Sadly, again, this product fails to do so. But this is not to be seen as a problem because think of we have a current situation which will allow us to incur into the investment costs that we have right now. The market is expected to grow by the year 2015 by 100%, from which Thing, uh, this product has a, uh, a large portion of it. So, 
if we actually incur into the investment costs that will help us to secure the future, the long-term market, it will help us at the same time to uh, move away from all the health claims and, and the health problems that we're currently uh, dealing with. At the same time, this will help us secure our local market and prevail on foreign markets on a financial, legal, and ethical way. And that's how we will prosper. Thank you very much. We thank you for your time and we hope that this has been helpful. Okay. <laughs> right, no questions. Um, you, yes, first of all, uh, nice job and uh, thanks very much for the session. This was, it was good help. Um, I, I want to start sort of the question uh, session by asking, uh, uh, okay, so there's, there's now become this challenge uh, uh, in terms of the media publicity and the contradiction, which I think you've done well up front. Uh, of how we see ourselves versus how we're uh, perceived as a risk and in fact there's legitimate evidence from what's occurred that we, we uh, have a risk here. Okay, so uh, I, I guess my question would be, would be simple. Do you recommend your product to, to family members and friends? Do you recommend your product to uh, uh, others who, who are, you know, you, you, uh, know in the community? Do you use the product that could work? Uh, and if you, if you do, how do you uh, sort of reconcile that with, with some of the risks you've discussed? Uh, or, or, or if you don't, then why not? I, I assume you're referring to our proposed so solution. Now, just right. refer to the product yourself and, and, and whether you use the product yourself or... Uh, As it currently is? Yes. Cool. Well, to clear up from the beginning, ultimately, um, we are a consulting firm that you have brought us in to address the issues. Good. So Good. currently, you're Living Essentials, Good. and we're uh, Simarota Consulting. Okay. So, you want to elaborate further on that? Yeah, so our point, I mean, our presentation was, was essentially no, we would not, because of all the previous mentioned reasons. Um, I mean, yeah, in short, no. Um, and But we do feel it's a resolvable issue, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, and it's primarily because of the ingredients. Um, not purely even just as a health issue, you can also improve in the market because of our recommended solutions. We feel that they account for the issues with caffeine, they account for the issues with B6, and they still provide uh, the energy that is promised in the product. Have you tried the product? Have you used it yourself? Have you had others try it or considered using it and so forth? Um, as part of our research, we actually have tried the product to see the effects yeah. that it caused on people. And I have to say, I haven't tried it again ever since. <laughs> I consider it. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I consider that the product currently has certain fallacies which can be resolved, and that's uh, the entire point of our presentation. But we consider that currently is not a suitable product for people to consume as what it is. But we see a lot of potential if uh, these measures will be applied. Okay. And, and to add on to that, I, I'd also had it. I'm sure we've all had something like it. Um, and part of the issue is that at the time, I didn't think there was any issue. I wasn't worried about what I was consuming. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, when we did all this research, it then started working, and that's part of the problem we're talking about is the information is there, but people don't necessarily know. Thanks. Um, maybe just from the, from the business standpoint, um, complying with the FDA is not an expensive thing. And so what's, do you have any sense of what the incremental cost is in having an FDA, um, an FDA compliant beverage labeling? Um, we, did, we did not research the exact costs of complying with the FDA, but we do believe that no matter the costs, your, your product is going to have to switch to marketing as a beverage eventually. As I mentioned before, the entire energy drink supplement or energy drink market in, as a whole has begun making the switch to being marketed as a beverage. So if you do not begin marketing as a beverage, your product is going to be essentially left behind in the dust. At the same time, if we implement actually these measures which agree with the FDA, it will not only have a local effect, it will have a wide global effect, which actually will cover for the investments cost. Uh, particularly, your company is very profitable as what it is uh, nowadays, so incurring such a con would only be an investment toward the long term in which you will be, become much more profitable. Um, in, in, um, in your presentation, you mentioned that Monster and some of the others are already FDA beverages, and, and, and accordingly, seemingly, haven't been singled out to the same degree as 5-Hour Energy for data press. Um, to what extent is there, you know, you said that 5-Hour Energy is no longer a unique product, so now becoming just like Monster and just like the other FDA-regulated beverages, does that not just make us 
uh, a Me Too product again? Well, um, well, Fiber Energy, first of all, is an energy shop, whereas Monster and Red Bull are like energy drinks. So that alone is, distinguishes it from the other energy drinks. What we are saying is that you're not unique in the energy shop market anymore. So there are beginning to be other sh energy shots that are competing with Fiber Energy. So if those energy shots are continuing to take steps to help the health of their product as well as their marketing, et cetera, they're gonna move ahead of Five Hour Energy, whereas, yeah, we would, want, we would prefer to be the first in that direction. And we can actually say a specific example of a brand of energy shots called Advocare Spark that has already begun to change its ingredients to more natural. Uh, they include vitamins such as A, C, and E and reduce uh, vitamins such as B6. And they are already on the market and they are starting to get, get into that more healthier energy shot. Uh, and what's their marketing focus? How are they? Just uh, as, as a more healthy alternative to the dozens of other shots. Gotcha. But just to point out what the current situation is, uh, Fire Energy is currently 90, has 90% of the market share, which is a particularly significant uh, figure, but which if these solutions would not be to be implemented, that's, that uh, number can be changed drastically. So this is why we propose all these solutions. Right, thank you. It seems to me that the target market would also be an avenue to look at for changing up the product. So when I look at it as, say, the major audience is the guy working the 10-hour night shift, the older I get and the more I work those hard hours, obviously my, the older I am, my health degrades over years. So it's, it's, I can't help but wonder if there's an avenue or an opportunity to, to change the product and market it then to swallow the changes, but market it to a more younger audience that could really care less about the health aspect of it. I don't, I'm not suggesting you don't go down the path of the health aspect of it, but I wonder if there's an, uh, an added benefit by looking at changing the target audience as well. well. We actually have noticed that the target audience is rather extensive, as you mentioned. Um, to go off your point, we feel that the issue, the reason why it needs to be changed, like you said, um, has to do with um, the target market, 18, early 20s, um, in which it is common to mix five hour energy with alcohol, which has been shown is a terrible idea and it can make everything even worse. So that would be another reason to change it for their benefit. Um, but yeah, there is certainly room to not only change it for the younger crowd, but also the older crowd. Um, we would just recommend that in, if you do take the avenue of marketing it to a younger crowd, that you do not market to those under 18 because as we stated in our presentation, Monster is already being sued. That American Academy of Pediatrics already says that they're already trying to get it, energy drinks to only be sold to those over 18. So marketing to those under 18 is not going to help your product in any way. But if you're going down the path of changing the ingredients to actually reduce the amount of health risk in the product, why not market a younger audience? Well, even Monster, Monster has 70 milligrams of caffeine. Your product contains 215 milligrams of caffeine. So even if you significantly reduce the amount of caffeine, it would still be a problem to market to those under 18. And that is certainly an option for you to explore. Um, we feel that the younger you get, the more involved parents seem to get. So parents are still gonna wanna give their children and the younger crowd something that's still healthy. Um, just because it's not awful for them, the parents are still gonna wanna know, you know it's healthy and it won't endanger their, their lives at all. I believe she, sorry, she had her hand up for <laughs> um, Okay, so we don't necessarily clarify in this presentation the demographics of our users. But from what I've observed, most, there's a certain amount of brand loyalty to the five hour. Um, and it's, it's, it's a lot of people that don't necessarily care about being so thoughtful about what they're purchasing. They really are satisfied with it works. It's at a price point they can afford, and a solid product placement at AM, PM, everywhere, and it's an impulse item. So with that, I, I kind of have two places to go with this. And one is the overwhelming message is to create a new product and to fall in line and be an FDA, FDA approved beverage. And I'm okay with that. But the other one, and I said this separate brand identity that falls under us that, you know, five-hour energy light, I don't know, some
something that's just a different independent product. I think that with the existing product, we could run into the new Coke problem. And I don't know if your generation knows about the new Coke problem, so I'll explain it. Um, in the mid-80s, uh, Coca-Cola was responding to what their market research was telling them their clients wanted out of the beverage. And basically, the research was that Pepsi tasted better than, than Coke. And so Coke went out of their way to be more Pepsi-like. And so they rolled it out as this tough, big factor moment of the new Coke. And all the, the traditional Coke was marketed as Coca-Cola Classic. And it's probably one of the biggest disasters in marketing and advertising and change management out there. And so, so much of our identity is built into being this dependable five-hour energy drink. Yes, we have our lawsuits and our legal issues that we do need to tackle, labeling, and I'm all for more transparency, but at what point are, are, are we really risking and betting the whole company on this decision to obliterate our current product? And I, I understand and I feel it needs to be addressed in two ways. First, uh, the reason it's different from the Coke issue is as an energy shot, it's not meant to be sipped. Um, it really doesn't even taste that good if you guys ever try it. It's literally meant to be taken quick and rapid. So that kind of change wouldn't really matter. We don't recommend that you, you know, change the label or change the title, change the design. Um, we recommend you have the same product and then in addition with this new advertising, you basically say we're looking out for you guys with it's the same product you know and love, it looks the same, except we're making it healthier. But it's not the same then. Right, in ter well, except for in terms of health. We feel that it's still going to have the energy it needs. Um, maybe we did make clear enough the, the primary target is the employee who's working the eight or nine hour shifts. And as you mentioned, there is a lot of brand loyalty and people do say, oh, I know this, I like it, I'll take it, I use it. And that was the other issue we were mentioning, is people just keep using it. They don't necessarily know all this information about it. And we feel, we feel that if they did, they would change their idea. So we need to be a step ahead of that. Also, if you uh, take the, the example of Monster Energy, Monster Energy changed to be marketed as a beverage in March. So this is a pretty recent change. Um, most people don't even know that, that Monster changed from being marketed as an energy supplement to a beverage. It doesn't have to be something that you are putting all over your commercials and everything. It can just be in the way that it's regulated under the FDA. I think her point just is, is really more to you have a loyal audience, right? You have people that are buying it. And, I mean, let's use tobacco as an example. We all know it kills, right? But there are people who are committed and dedicated and addicted to tobacco. No matter how much the label says it's going to kill you, they're still going to do it. So I think what the point is that's being made is <coughs> as the stockholder, or as the, uh, the uh, board of directors here, why would we go disrupt something that works? Let's take and label it. This could kill you and put on, don't make the disclaimer this small. Make it so it's readable. And then make the offshoot for the healthier crowd that does want to juice up the vitamin aspect of it and down the caffeine aspect of it. In fact, I address this question. Um, if you would like to turn into the outline that we have given up, we include the mission statement. That is why we think they should do the change. In their it closest who you as a company stand for and what you think is right and wrong to do and what you're ought to do and what you strive for. You strive for the highest ethical conduct. You strive to give the best of the very best to your customers. If you're aware that there's an ethical issue in your product, that is directly contradicting what your mission statement is. And as we have discussed in previous meetings, this is what you want to do as a company. So we're just proposing the solutions that directly go with what you stand as a company. So that would be the reason and why to actually make these changes. Sorry, just that one more thing. Um, I, we, we agree, we understand that it does take significant change to the product, but ultimately the ethical dilemma is your product is dangerous, you know what causes the danger, and you have the ability to substitute different ingredients. So in looking out for your market, you have that ethical obligation to do so. At the same time, I feel like we are the consulting firm. You call us in because you have the problem. We're just addressing you. We're showing you what the problem is, and we are showing you the solutions. So you're currently telling me why you should change your product when you brought me here today. I brought all of us here today as consultants to consult you on the issue that we are discussing right now. Yes. I, I, and I think you're um, doing a, a good job of informing us. 
Um, I want you as our consultants to kind of struggle with a uh, particular question uh, with me, if you would. Um, you mentioned that our, our product, our only product, has 90% of the market share. Yes. Correct. So, yes, I, we as a board have a responsibility to live up to our mission and to care about the um, consumer confidence and consumer health. Right? We also, at the same time, have a responsibility to our shareholders um, to fulfill our fiduciary duty to make sure this company survives. Uh, can, can you speak to the uh, idea of introducing a second product which um, has all of what you are recommending and having a plan to potentially phase out the original five hour energy drink but limiting our risk as a company um, we, we will not be able to offer a healthier alternative if we do not exist. And so we need you to help us to um, understand how we can introduce a healthier uh, product and yet not go out of business. Well, well, as we mentioned, it would take substantial financial investment. Um, but, uh, sorry to go off one of your points, you mentioned that uh, you know, offer two products or sort of phase it out. Um, yes, you do have about 90% of the market. Your product has been around for a while. And only in the past year or two have issues really been starting to pop up. For instance, this ABC News ad. Uh, you could also go on Google, type in five hour energy supplement. I believe that it's the third and fourth. Fourth. Um, the headline is uh, danger, health. It, it's basically bad press for you. And that coupled with the fact that I was mentioning there are more energy shots coming into the market, you're slowly gonna lose market share, not just because of the bad news surrounding around your product, which we feel is with energy shots in general, but because your name is well known, they brand your name as the responsible one. We feel that coupled with all the new uh, types of energy, energy shots, you are eventually going to lose market share. So we feel that this isn't like a auxiliary kind of solution. It's something where eventually you're gonna to have to do it or you're gonna fade it into the background. Yeah, a related question. Have you analyzed who the target, you say we have 90%, in terms of demographics, who are these folks? Are they Hispanic, are they Asian? We know what the demographics in the United States are. And, and have you looked at maybe who would be our new market? Because we're concerned, obviously, about losing market share. But there might be an opportunity to gain market share if we knew who what the demographics are of our current market and who we can go after. Currently we have identified at least two big important markets which are not differentiated by race but particularly by different activities. We have in, in Canada a sector of the demographics which need constant su uh, supply of energy due to their intensive work as is such people who work in hard labor and uh, hand labor and even also people who have, for example, are experiencing college careers in a much different demographic group, which under the current stress of um, studying and, and, and turning in different papers and ex extreme demand of energy, and they have turned into your product. And at the same time, we also understand that since if we apply these measures, we can gain new markets, such as such say, of people who are more concerned about the organic or, or at least the healthier option from energy drinks, and we might even be able to cap some of the energy drinks uh, sectors from people who does not have that much time to consume an entire energy, uh, an entire beverage, but they need a, a shot of energy particularly. Um, I don't believe that there's that many uh, racial differentiations as of now, particularly <coughs> sectorized under the necessity of energy uh, for which they demand their activities. Those would be the big sectors of demographics. Also, as Juan said in our presentation, if you do make these changes, you do have the opportunity to expand your market more into Europe, who has more stricter regulations on caffeine. So that, that, that whole new market can also help to make up for any shares that you may lose in the process of changing. 
profit, profitability, uh, profitability can be gained from markets such as Mexico, Panama, Portugal, South Korea. As of also gaining the markets in which we are, we are right now, as which are Canada, the UK, Ireland, Spain. Um, these markets have slowed down and are now growing. But if we actually implement all this, we can get new demographics in those uh, different regions, which much for sure, as studies show, uh, will allow us to bring new revenues into our company, into your company, sorry. Seems to me, uh, um, you know, I've, I've never taken any of this stuff, maybe I have enough energy already. <laughs> um, uh, it seems to me, if we can come up with something, which, which um, you seem to indicate is not uh, particularly flavorful profile anyway. If we can create a formula that has the same shelf life, same flavor profile, um, and the same energy benefits, what's the disadvantage to simply rolling out the new formulation? Don't make a big deal about it at all. Don't change the packaging at all, other than to add the required FDA packaging and uh, maintain our 90% market share of the loyal customers who already like us just the way that we are, and at least that would stop some of the assaults from the other outside, you know, from the, uh, I'm having a hard time as I watch you squint on that little bottle trying to figure out how you're going to put a, an FDA um, nutritional labeling on the back of that little thing anyway. But also, there, this is all like extra warnings right here, so right. FDA label would not need quite as many warnings. And, and all honesty, that's I think we would agree is how it should it should be done, except you do want to advertise it. So you don't want to change label, you still want to hold on to your consumers, but one of the things Amy mentioned is People who drank Monster regularly with Red Bull Energy had no idea it changed from a drink to a beverage or a supplement to a beverage. People don't know, they, they don't really care what that means, they just know what they're putting in their bodies. So we feel that by change your product line, people know. The 90% you already have are still going to drink it at least once, and once they can confirm that it's still the same effective uh, energy shot, they will continue. But what you're also gaining by letting people know what you're doing is all the skeptics. All the people who say they're not sure, or I don't know, it's dangerous, or I don't know, it doesn't look safe. Those are the people who are now be won over. basically safe to consume in like those two bottles like you were saying your friends do consume per day and doesn't cause any you know side effects and stuff like that at the same time like we, the, the other vitamin vitamin would, would be six right so b6 also to decrease the levels of that because being b6 being taken in, in multiple in, in multiple of your bottles could basically create health issues so essentially we're not saying to completely like renovate your product 
we explored new ideas and explored new ingredients. So everything that we've proposed ultimately provides the same amount of energy, if not more. So your product will still be the same, still provide that same substance that everyone's looking for when taking a five hour energy. So you're not losing anything in a sense. We're just decreasing the dangerous amounts of ingredients that you have in your product and putting in safer ingredients that have been proven to provide the same amount of energy and alertness to make up for the stuff we're taking out. So the consistency of the effects would be the same. But also in addition, to answer your question, yes, additional testing would probably be required in order to make sure that your product does still contain the same amount of energy because you do not want to be marketing your product in the same way as we already are, as I pointed out, that in a way that may be misleading. You want to make sure that every single one of your claims is completely truthful. So yes, to answer your question, additional testing would be required, but the cost that the, that testing would require would be made up with new market shares. So, sorry, not beat the dead horse. As Amy <laughs> said, it would require further analysis, which we are not experts in, but based on our research, we do know that the capacity is there uh, for such ingredients like B12, vitamin C, things like that. So we know it can be done, but when the actual formulation takes place, that's when uh, analysis will be made performed. Yeah, and you answered it well. I just, I, I know that there's a culture out of there of, of people who, you know, the ibuprofen says take one or take two of the most and they pop four. Because if that's one, I'm not going to get what I need unless I can't you know, up to this. And, and I just, and, and maybe it's marketing needs to have its own education campaign, but I think we have to be very transparent of what we're doing behind the scenes. And, yeah. and if you decide to go this route, I don't think we can go too quietly on the route. Yeah, and absolutely. Feel like there's a certain vetting the company and reshaping the message and the product line. We're, we're out of time. Okay. 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 So, um, first of all, really very good job. Um, you. you guys came on in Q&A. I, I thought you guys did a really good job at it. One, one of the things I want to mention, um, first in the context of, of your presentation, starting off with your videos uh, and showing the contrast between your own advertising and, and, the, and the, uh, the ABC story, that's powerful and very effective. Really, really good. Um, the AD rule, very dangerous. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times those have halted or. Absolutely. Uh, it, was a, it was a high wire maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. Yeah, I tested it twice. <laughs> <laughs> good, good work. And, and that reflects well on, on the research you did. Um, I also, it was clear to me you guys had a, a real strong sense of who the company was and who they weren't. Um, and also understood sort of where we were in terms of uh, in the market. Um, just for just experience, when you're a single product company, and, and particularly a single product company that's done financially very well, messing with that is, is, is just <laughs> a whole area. Um, you know, one, one of the things I really liked uh, was you know, recognizing, okay, you know, there's a U.S. market, there are other markets, and you can have different products in different markets as a function of your regulatory requirement Mark, uh, having practices or, or behaviors or values in other markets. Um, I think the cigarette analogy is great. You, know, you go to Europe, cigarettes are smoked quite completely differently than they are here in North America, for example. Um, so the other part is you really thought through, for me, what, what I thought were some of the, the options we had in terms of mission statement, very good. Uh, communication disclosure and, and labeling, uh, I thought those were really helpful. The, the Probably the third rail is changing the formulation. Um, and at the same time, Jonathan, to your credit, you knew we had a non-caffeinated product. Yeah. And it reminds of it. <laughs> and, and that was very helpful as well. Um, you know, I, I run the marathon in Chicago every year. It's, it's just a bad habit I have. But, uh, <laughs> you know, when I, when I run that thing, I know at 18 miles, darn it, I want to go with caffeine. And it don't get me close, what's without caffeine? <laughs> I never realized it was the alertness, you know, that, that was making the difference. So, um, you're, you, you chose a compelling, fascinating topic. I think you presented it well. I thought you really structured your presentation well. Um, and I thought uh, you got over your sort of, what well, maybe start out a little, maybe a little nervous in terms of presenting. In Q and A, I think you guys really connected well with, with the group of sites. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Um, I thought that, um, you know, I also thought it, it was helpful that several times you brought us back to the concept that you know these things are true. You know that people need to know this, and so it's the right thing to do. The right thing to do is we got to own up to the fact this is our product, this is what we sell, and we owe it to our customers. It's just 
itself, this is what it is. And I think that that, that was a compelling part of the ethics because I think that exactly to Kevin's point, some of the other judges as well, um, a single product company that's making a lot of money and has 90% market share, it is terrifying to even think to, to mess around with it, even though, but the compelling thing to me was, despite all of that, you can't argue around the fact that we know that there's things in here that, that make it easy for people to mistreat our product, and we should deal with that. And I think you, you can deal with that from strength when you are the market leader, and I think that was really, um, that was, a, that was very compelling. Um, I find it shocking that um, everyone was disclaiming use of the product. But <laughs> yeah. I can't believe before finals we get up on camera. Just a couple things in, in, your, in your role playing. Um, living up above with love for four years like I did, I know how easy it is to say you guys. No one ever calls me you guys in a professional game. So it's a small thing. Um, and, and, uh, and, uh, and Jonathan, your passion was great, but um, uh, you kind of dressed us down there one time, and you got to be really careful. And, uh, yeah. but one of the hardest things to remember, especially in the role as a consultant, your role is to um, is to identify the problems as delicately as possible <laughs> and you can even build a at the end of the consulting agreement. Because if you're telling me things I don't want to hear and then presenting me with an invoice, you have to be delicate. <laughs> uh, but other than that, it was, um, it made me glad I don't drink this stuff. <laughs> I actually commend you for taking this on. I think it's an extremely touchy ethical issue to the points that have already been made from a, from a corporate perspective, almost every corporate head is borderline, if not over the top, are narcissistic, right? <laughs> we all got here doing what we did, and we, we aren't gonna be talked to or told how to do it differently. To Dan's point, you want that, that bill paid at the end of the day, but, but in any ethical issue or situation, you have to go in and approach it in such a gentle manner that if the person that you're delivering a message to or trying to fact find from or investigate uh, an issue, research if you will, if, if you come across in a scolding or in a luxury kind of a manner, you're gonna shut your audience down. And, and in this situation, we were the people making the decisions, even though we said come and give us your be really careful that you understand who your audience is and how the message you're delivering will be perceived. Because it isn't what you said, it's what they heard that's gonna go out the door that they're gonna remember. So especially in really touchy ethical situations, you've gotta be really careful that, Dan, I think you put it really well, that you're just presenting the facts and then they are left to make a decision. I think you did a great job bringing it back. Um, I wrote down the word damage control. I think that in this situation, you guys had a, uh, you guys did a fantastic job underscoring, highlighting, emphasizing, um, making it really bold that we have a serious ethical issue that has to be addressed right now. So this is your opportunity to do some damage control and perhaps take the opportunity to look at what other avenues we could take this bad situation and make it a good situation right so i think that um you did a fantastic job making me feel like there's a sense of urgency that we've got to do something now and i only combat it a little bit because i wanted to give you back the narcissistic approach that you're going to get from the boards that are going to say you know we got here on this we don't like your answer so <laughs> give us a different answer right so yeah. But congratulations, great job. Thank you. Uh, I do think you did a, a really good job. I like the fact that you kept coming back to the ethical dimensions of it. I mean, you just brought it back. And I'll tell you, some folks were, they, they I think this is very typical of what would have actually happened, where there would have been folks that said, hey, we're the market leader, we're making money, what's the <laughs> But you brought it back, you brought it back, I think that's, that's really, really important. I like the fact that 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 you mentioned the men 
the mission statement, we talked about values. Uh, I would talk more about that. I would spend more time on that. Say, this is who you are, or this is who you say you are. Uh, I would try to find some examples of maybe some companies that that, that went under because then maybe they were in a similar situation where they were riding high and because they didn't take the right course of action, they went down. And that would have been, I think, really strong. The other thing, uh, I give you a softball question, and I would think in this day and age, when you're doing research, you know the demographic differences in the markets, okay? Because, and, and, but you did good in terms of Europe. You, you said, well, wait a minute, there's Europe and there's Mexico, and, I, and that's great, but I mean, all you have to do is, is open up a uh, marketing magazine to know who the big markets are right now, right? Mm -hmm. In the United States, who the emerging markets are, Hispanics and Asians. To know about those markets and how they how they impact this. That would have been, I think, uh, another, I don't know, it might, not, it might have hurt your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, you want to leave it out, I don't know. But, you know just something, and this is more in general, that they, these are important considerations nowadays. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. I, I agree with my colleagues. I, I think the opening was genius. Um, very, very compelling. Um, I also, I wrote down here at one point, imagining myself on the board. Are you saying that we as a board have been untruthful in our advertising? That we have been deceitful? Um, and I, I think about, as Joe just mentioned, Enron had the best code of conduct you would ever want to read. And so maybe you would distinguish um, our fine company, Living Essentials, from Enron in that this is what Enron said they would do, but we know you, Living Essentials, we know that you truly want to, to uh, absolutely embody your mission statement, which is before you now. Um, I, I, I work a good bit with uh, consultants and auditors, and I find them more and more saying we. So when they're talking about so what, what that, how that would play out in this context, um, you as living essentials consultants, you're putting yourself together with this team, the board, and you're saying, you know, our product, you know, five. I mean, you, you wouldn't want to overplay that, and you don't want to draw uh, that if it's, if it's not true. But when, when we hear that from attorneys, when we hear that from other consultants, when they say we, it automatically uh, signals for a team. Um, I, I really enjoy it. I like how you were unwavering in your position. Uh, at the same, and, and you have me convinced more than I had expected, uh, and um, really kind of uh, buying into your passion about the health. And I, I think that I would, uh, I would want you to have another way to phase it in, as opposed to a switch of one product or another completely, uh, just in case that wasn't bought. Really that there be a um, fallback position. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Um, I'd like to say that my favorite part was the passion and urgency with which you delivered this book. I think that um, it really does have to come in this sort of situation of death on five, that you're really dealing with, um, you know, that you're one bad lawsuit or death away from losing everything. Um, and so you did that, and as much as I would try to fork in the road and go this way, it kept pulling me back. Uh, I, I think the missing slide here, though, is that you did sort of approach this in the very beginning with your being attacked. And so in my mind, there was sort of a war analogy kind of going on. Um, and for me, the missing slide was really the casualties. Like, if you stay the force, change course and how we change course. And so I think it would have been interesting to have a slide somewhere in the middle of the presentation that showed sort of where you start to move away from the five hour as it is and how you start to ramp up the six hour or whatever the new thing is and, and show that sort of handoff of if you can get to these 
benchmarks and get this and you go to this and, and, you, and you exit from five hours it is today and you roll out your new product and you come up with, you know, maybe some other product line suggestions down the road on how you might grow. Uh, because, you know, back in the, in the back of my head the whole time was the, this is new code and we're going to lose everything. Uh, if we do this wrong. And so there, I think there just needs to be that one slide. This is the, this is the game plan. This is the, how we attack this problem, how we save lives. So good job. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions for us? Uh, yeah. Very good. Okay. <laughs> I have one last um, comment. It's purely not so much about this product, but in your chartsmanship as you go forward in your careers, um, put percentages on your charts. So it's really good to see the, the graph go from here to here. But if you, even if it's a bubble that says that's at 20% or 80% yeah. change, um, seeing what that number is in percentage points is really drives it home. So it's not just, I'm not just seeing it climb up the chart, I'm also seeing, you know, we only had a problem this big back when, but it's grown by 100 and some odd percentage points or 